All right, it's after midnight here I'm in my dad's garage, and this is our father son project. And well, she left now, but the family dog Ruby. And I just wanted to give a little tour here of this John Deere tractor because this is how I'm trying to learn a little bit about mechanics from my dad, who was a professional mechanic and then a farmer for a long time before he retired. So we've got this mid-1960s John Deere 510, and we're just sort of fixing what needs to be fixed. My dad found it used. Let me zoom out a little bit here so you can see more of it. It's quite an interesting tractor made in Germany. I'll show you a little bit of what we've been working on here. We got the valve cover off, three cylinder. One of the things we did was we replaced, let me point them out here, these little rubber pieces. Uh, if memory serves, this is the fuel return line for what's not used from these injectors here. And these rubber pieces were cracked and we got new ones and put them in so it's not leaking anymore. We also adjusted all these valves so that they were adjusted to the proper specifications, which was an interesting thing. I'd never done that before. Uh, moving over here, we replaced this cable right here, this one which is the kill switch cable. If memory serves, it's étrangleur in French, uh, which for some reason I remember better than English. So here it is here, the end of it. And that cable was seized. And so we replaced it. It connects over here in a nice little complicated way. Uh, this was a job to get deep into here and undo the nuts and replace things and put the spring back it was a little bit tricky. We had to undo the battery here because uh, when we were trying to put it in place, this is why we put a, a bit of hose on this section because while we were trying to figure out how long it should be and where it should be, it touched this part of the battery and got extremely hot, extremely fast. So a little safety measure there. Safety first, I guess you could say. Uh, by the way, while I'm up here, if anybody knows why they designed it with this very complicated, sort of unnatural system of shifting, uh, let me know. Look, here's the diagram that they expect to explain some of that. So yeah, if you know it, you're a better man than I, I suppose. This is going to be part of what we need to work on here. None of these gauges work. In theory, actually, the shifters are explained in a little sticker here and one on the other side as well, but they're gone, so our neighbor is making some new ones for us. Uh, but this will be a project for next time because I'm going back home tomorrow when I won't be back in Canada for a little while. Uh, some of these levers here, I think this is the handbrake. There's another lever back there. Don't know what it does. They're seized. We're going to have to work on those. Uh, we got some body work in the future, too. If you look here under these fenders, without the lights, maybe. Yeah, there's a bit of rust in some important places that we're going to work on there. And here at the back, we have a few things. We do have a PTO shield to put on there, which we will do at some point. There's some other body issues here that you can see. Uh, we do also have a drawbar, an extremely heavy drawbar. I'm not sure why they made them so heavy. The tractor's only 40 horsepower, but that's gonna get installed as well. I'm gonna come around without my knuckles here. Sorry, folks, this is just a one take uh, little unscripted bit. Ah, uh, yes, we're gonna have to work on these uh, brake pedals here because underneath, in there somewhere they're seized together they do work though thankfully and on this side as Ruby does a little maintenance on herself there as well 
On this side, we've been working on some fuel issues as well. This hose and the seals here were leaking and are leaking. That's why we have the pan there and that's why this is also weeping. That's why we have this rag here. And we'll replace those. We ordered the parts. We thought they were going to come today, but of course, they're late. So better late than never, I guess. There's the new oil filter we put on. By the way, we changed the oil as well. We had to do a little repair job on the oil pan plug because someone had previous owner at some point had kind of partly broken it. I don't know if we can. Yeah, there we go. So we just welded a nut onto it because it was very difficult to get it off uh, given the damage that had been done to it. While we're down here, I want to show you that this part, interestingly enough, I think that's all part of the oil pan, but anyway, it's made in France. And the tractor itself, or nearly all of it anyway, made in Germany, in Mannheim. So if any Germans who ever watch this can give us any tricks or tips, then uh, let us know or explain some of the interesting design features. Let us know. We also worked on the um, air filter up here in the front. I'm gonna make sure not to step on Ruby. It's an interesting um, type of air filter. I hadn't seen one like this before, but my dad explained it to me. Actually, I'll come around so I can show you a bit better. So it's like an oil bath type of air filter where this pot down here has some oil in the bottom and when the air goes in with dust or other bits and contaminants, they just stick in the oil, which I thought was an interesting, an interesting feature. No idea what this arm does though. There's a weird arm that fits under this um, retaining strap and it just kind of goes down and is attached to there and we're not exactly sure what the deal is this spring is not correctly attached by the way we just put a wire on it for now there's actually a place where it hooks on down there near that pump and then the grill needs a little tlc for now we just sort of tacked it back on here because it had rusted through but eventually i want to do something with that so that's the story so far of our John Deere 510. I don't even think I told you guys the model yet, but yes, a John Deere 510 from the mid 60s. We got the manuals, we bought them, ordered them in, one of them in from the States. So yeah, that's our project so far. And if I can, I'll try to give you guys another update, maybe around Christmas time when I come back home. So for me and dad, and Ruby, who I think I've put to sleep by now. Uh, that's it. Hope you enjoy it. If you have any feedback, any tips, let me know.